Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Izzam bin Zahari. We are from Group 5. We present about the electric field distribution on 132 kV alternate sheet polymeric insulator. Next for introduction. Firstly, high voltage insulator are essential for equipment protection, safety and environmental consideration in transmission line. Second, understanding environmental factors such as salt fog, humidity, acid and violet radiation is crucial to improve polymeric insulator performance. This research report focuses on experimental study using finite element analysis FEA, and FEM software. The simulation also consider various environmental conditions include dry and wet, salty and polluted environment. Next for problem statement, there are several factors that contribute to increase using of polymeric insulator in high voltage. The use of polymeric insulator has been gaining popularity for the following reason. Firstly, while polymeric insulator have, have weakness withstanding dry band discharges and long term durability, they offer profitability compared to porcelain or glass. Next, polymeric insulator are much lighter in white. Therefore, their use result in reduced storage, handling, and construction costs. Next, for objective, this project has three aims, which are follow. Firstly, purpose and operation dielectric material for high voltage insulator by using dielectric type of material, which is polymeric. Second, to analyze insulator prototype electrical stress performance by using finite element analysis (FEA) with the aid of FEMM software. Third, to create an insulator that meet with standard specific requirement while preserving the environmental factor. Then, for the scope, with insulator material capable of maintaining of high voltage of 132 kV, the design must in order to produce the desired effect. This project is concerned with the following scope. Firstly, the problem is to choose suitable material type for high voltage insulator. Second, finite element analysis FEA is required to analyze, analyze the high voltage and electric field test of the insulator. FEMM software will be used to perform the electric stress, high voltage test and electric field test analyzation based on the parameter choice from the insulator. Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Anis Mustaqim bin Muhammad Shuaimi and I will present about project outcome. At the end of the project, students are able to design high voltage insulator based on this requirement. The first one is using dye electric material for prototype. The second one is perform FEA analysis based on chosen material prototype insulator. And the last one is determine the properties and the performance of the insulator based on the FEA analysis. Okay, for the next part, I will present about technical summary of chosen concept design using AutoCAD. The type of insulator has been chosen by our company is alternate sheet polymeric insulator suspension. The string of 24 insulator is subsequently modeled in free space with the supply voltage of 132 kV applied to the 24 insulator, while the first insulator is grounded. Uh, we can also see our design, uh, polymeric alternate sheet design for the side view and uh, for the 3D view. Okay, uh, next, for the insulator properties, the system voltage that we are using is 132 kV, type are strings, material are polymeric, the maximum length are 2500mm, the creepage clearance are 8164mm, the conductors are 175 the fitting are alternate shape, the insulator type we are using are suspension, the number of alternate for our suspension suspension insulator is 24 the insulator's length that we are designed is 200 mm and the weight of the insulator is 8 kg and the minimum failing load are 132 kilo n ok the next the dimension of the unit alternate sheet okay, the diameter is 280 mm spacing is 176 mm and the total creepage distance minimum is 340 mm and the bulk scoping size is 20mm and the socket 
coupling side is 20 mm and the last one is for concept design is geometry of the mode okay for the first column we have uh, boundary condition which is uh, our condition is open boundary for the next column we have conductor type and voltage so for the type we have high voltage and ground for high voltage we, uh, we are going for the max which is 130 kV and voltage is zero and the last column is material we have type and permittivity for the type we have air and the permitting for the air is one next um, is metal the permitting is also one and the third one is polymer the permittivity is 22.1 next water the permittivity is 80.3 the second line is contaminated the permittivity is 80 and the last one is salt permittivity is 15 next Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Irfan bin Khot with material number CE210186 uh, Okay, today I will present uh, my part is process flow and uh, technical summary of the methodology Okay, uh, based on the figures uh, figure above uh, it shows that the flow chart of the whole uh, process to uh, successfully uh, to successfully complete this project Okay, in the first step is uh, student engage with the brainstorming session uh, where it is uh, to generate ideas and conduct research on the given question Okay, uh, then they calculate the dimension uh, of the shed which uh, include uh, determining the appropriate height, diameter and also the thickness Okay, uh, also this uh, step provide a comprehensive approach uh, to designing uh, an insulator for given scenario So result can be obtained by using uh, FEMM software to find a voltage and also the electrical fit uh, use on two dimensional plane and uh, AC symmetric uh, domains and uh, analyzing result by collecting data so uh, for the uh, for the technical summary for the software is uh, installing uh, the related software so the flow, uh, the flow chart of FEMM software uh, is installed related and collecting data about the insulator to do drawing of the insulator insulator uh, alternate shade and then uh, in FEMM software, uh, the input must be put uh, correct length. So after we put the correct length correctly, so if the uh, if uh, there is any error occur uh, in the project, in the software, so we need to uh, repeat the process again and again, which is to input the correct length correctly. So after that, we plot the graph uh, in uh, in the simulation. If the simulation is successfully compiled. Then we need to plot the electrical field and also the voltage graph and uh, analyze uh, and uh, analysis the result. So the FE FEMM software is used to design the two-dimensional or asymmetrical uh, design of the insulator and test the behavior of the insulator from a graph. So generator, the sizing of the prototype must be correct since if uh, it has uh, any uh, length that has uh, not correct, then the software cannot run and it will occur error will compiling the simulation. So uh, a graph of uh, electrical field and also the voltage where the graph was started from the bottle until the top part of the insulator sorry and the first and second uh, shed of the uh, of this left uh, to right so the graph the graph uh, was clean for the first part is in normal condition voltage and uh, electrical field so the length and the step was repeat, repeated if there is any error occur during the uh, the grating so the graph uh, through the FEMM software so that all the process flow of the project, uh, project and technical summary of the metro methodology. Assalamualaikum. So today I would like to demonstrate the electrical stress performance on alternate shade polymeric insulator for 132 kV system by using finite element analysis. So the finite element analysis that uh, we would like to perform by using FEMM software. So based on what uh, demonstrate over here. This is the uh, 12, sh 12 alternate shape uh, free page for polymeric insulator that carries uh, 132 kV system. So before we implement the parameter that we would like to use on this FEMM software, we need to know the properties. For the conductors, we declare a high voltage and low voltage to be applied on the surface of the insulator and transmission line. So for high voltage, we apply 132 kV system. And for low voltage, we will apply zero volt for, for the system. And besides that, we need to know what types of uh, materials we are going to use, such as air, uh, 
electrical field, electrical stress test during dry condition. And polymer is our main uh, material for the insulator. And metal is for the boundary, uh, for the low, vo uh, low high voltage side and low voltage side. And water contaminated and salt water is for the wet test, contaminated and contaminated is for contaminated test. And lastly is for the salt test. Uh, to determine the electrical stress performance on different surface uh, when the insulator is on the dead condition. So electrical stress performance is based on high voltage test and electrical field test. So when we talk about the parameter that I declared just now, so why I put here is air, we declare it as the boundary over here, uh, which is uh, no voltage and V is equal to zero, means that there is no voltage uh, occurrence. And we declare low 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 voltage eh, I'm sorry high voltage at the at the bottom over here which is 132 kV system and low voltage at the top over here which is oh sorry not over here at over here which is a uh, zero volt so when we how to run the FEMM shade analysis is by we uh, we need to run the mesh first so after we run the mesh we click on the beside it to uh, run at the F, uh, finite element analysis and we click over here the the glasses are indicated in order to uh, see the condition for our FMM analysis so the first we we, we would like to see the voltage plot on our polymeric insulator so like I said the bottom is 132 kV carries the voltage for 132 kV and the top is for the ground which is 0 volt so what what we would like to see oh, first we need to show the electric field e field uh, plot field intensity which is the uh, over here we can see only a bit of electric field charge on the bottom of 132 kV and at the top a bit also, also we can see over here uh, the only have a bit uh, of charge and basically this is on as a symmetrical as a symmetrical uh, Sorry, this is on exist symmetrical problem, so that's why we only can see a little bit of the of the E field plot. So what we are going to uh, see over here, we want to measure the the creepage of the alternate shape of the polymeric insulator. So by using the line tool of FMM software, we plot it on the line. So we want to see the uh, creepage measurement, and we measure the voltage first over here, and we can see that. It is over 9 kilovolt per 60 meter of the length of the uh, creepage or insulator prototype line. So, uh, it is decreasing. The, it is logically will decrease because the voltage is from high voltage side to low voltage side. So, if we can see for the E field charge, for the E field plot, which is magnitude of field intensity, we can see that the, uh, this is the uh, graph or waveform indicates when we measure the uh, E-field for dry condition uh, at the creepage of the alternate shape of polymeric insulator. So we can see at over 2.6 uh, megavolt per meter uh, and it will be U-shape type until it reach uh, 60, 60 meter insulator length. So let's move to the uh, wet condition uh, in electrical analysis, electrical stress analysis. So for the, I'm oh, sorry. So for the uh, wet condition analysis for electrical field stress for high voltage and electrical field, uh, we will add a uh, add uh, uh, water which is for uh, which carries the perm permittivity of uh, eighteen point three. We can see over here at the materials and over here. So water carry the permittivity of 80.3. So basically permittivity is an ability of a substance to keep uh, electric field uh, charge during electrical stress analysis. So it is the same shape as insulator that you see over on the on the dry condition and we just add the uh, water for uh, wet condition and we will run same uh, just like before we click the mesh Mesh analysis and run through the same type and the I'm sorry, so the our polymeric insulator alternate shape will look like this when after we run the mesh 
analysis on the FEMM uh, software. So like I said, the bottom is for 132 kV system and the top is for the zero volt or ground. And we will see that, uh, we will, we will measure the creepage. Uh, so we take the line tool over here from, uh, bottom to top. We take on the edge of the creepage clearance and up to, up to the top. So first we measure the voltage for wet condition. So it is, it is on 7.5, uh, kilovolt, uh, voltage drop during uh, wet condition. Uh, just as before, we get about, uh, six, uh, and we get about seven, uh, seven point nine megavolt for dry condition. And for wet condition, we get seven point five kilovolt of voltage for, uh, for alternate shade polymeric insulator during, uh, zero meter to sixty meter and the voltage will decrease. And for the electric field, E field magnitude of intensity, we will uh, see that for wet condition, the E field value is slightly uh, decreased or does not have high value during uh, wet condition because water does not have high ability of, does not have high value of permittivity but does not uh, contain the ability to store electric field for a long time. So as we can see over here, after it reach uh, 60 meter or at the end of the insulator, then we will have the value of uh, 5 uh, kilovolt, uh, 5 kilovolt per meter. As you can see over here, I block the, see the uh, magnitude still is same as uh, voltage per meter. So as you can see over here that on, after reach uh, 60 meter of the length of uh, alternate shade polymeric insulator prototype, we can see that it carries the value of 5 kilovolt per meter. So this is the graph for uh, wet condition. So let's move to contaminated condition. My name is Ajwal Dinesh Bermak Zimbri. My meticals number is CE210217. Now I will, I will explain about the FEA simulation results and data observation. Firstly, we can see about the, this is a figure 7.0 mesh figure for normal condition polymeric insulator. Next, we can see this is a figure uh, wet condition polymeric insulator. Okay, for the next, I will explain about the normal conditions. Okay, for the normal condition, we have a two picture. Uh, for the left picture, this is a voltage density plot for dry condition, and then this is voltage graph for dry condition. Okay, I will explain about the voltage graph. Okay, for the voltage graph, in figure uh, 7.4, voltage density plot for dry condition show that the voltage start at potential Lee of 1.5 to 1e plus 005 volts the voltage initially rise and then fall until it reach a length of 10 mm after that it gradually shorten until it 80 mm is in length once the rocket reach 80 mm in length it is increased once more at a, a voltage below 5e plus 004 then decrease until it reach 0 volts Therefore, the insulator is able to maintain its high resistance to current flow. The electric field created by the voltage will be contained within the insulator. If they apply voltage acid, the, the dielectric strength the insulating material may undergo dielectric breakdown. Okay, for the next, this is the uh, normal condition for electric field density plot for dry condition and electric field graph for dry condition. Okay, for the electric uh, field for dry condition, in figure 7.5, 7 this shows the electric field graph for dry condition. In this graph, the electric field start at between 2.5 E plus 00 V per M and 3 E plus 00 C V per M and it decreases until 5 length. After that, the graph start to ripple until it reach length of 60 mm. Finally, it increases rapidly after 60 mm. In the simulation, it shows that the insulator are working perfectly where along the insulator the electric field is able to be controlled by the insulator this is because the insulator can reduce the strength of the electric field within them then not allow significant current flow next this is feature for voltage density and electric field density for contaminate wet and salt condition okay for the next uh, i will explain about the contaminate condition for the voltage graph and electric field graph Okay, for the voltage graph, we can see 
you can see figure 7.8 illustrate a graph showing the relationship between length and voltage for a contaminant condition. The graph show that as the length of the insulator increase, the voltage slowly, slowly decrease. This contaminant can create conductive path allowing current to flow through the insulator which is undesir undesirable. When a current flow through the insulator, it can lead to leakage current and a redu redu reduction in the insulation performance of the insulator. In the graph, the voltage is observed to decrease slowly from 75 kV to, now to 60 kV as the length of the insulator increased by 65 mm. This indicated that as the length of the insulator increased, the insulator voltage will stand capability gradually diminish. This reduction in voltage withstand capability can attribute to the presence of conductive part formed by contaminant on the insulated surface. Okay, for figure 7.9, illustrate a graph showing the relationship between electric field and length for a contaminant condition. The graph show that the electric charge start dropping slowly at 2.5 mV per m, then they gradually decrease before exper experiencing a sudden increase until reaching 7.5 mV per m on a 60 mm length. In contaminated condition, the presence of pollutant or conductive material on the surface of an insulator can create conductive parts. The conductive part allow current to flow through the insulator resulting in leakage current. The presence of leakage current can lead to the decrease in the effective resistance of the insulator. When the effective resistance decreases, it means that the insulator becomes less effective at preventing the flow of current. This can result in an increase in current flowing through the insulator compared to when it is clean. Now, for wet condition. Okay, for wet condition, based on figure 7.10, uh, that show a voltage graph for wet condition. In this graph, voltage start dropping at 70 kV until 60 kV on 60 mm length. For this graph, the relationship between length and voltage is if the length increases, the voltage will decrease. Next, this condition can lead to energy losses and reduce the overall efficiency of the insulator and also decrease dielectric strength. This effect can have significant implications for the performance and reliability of electrical system. Therefore, it is crucial to consider appropriate insulation and protection measures to mitigate the impact of wet condition on insulator. Next, based on figure 7.11 that show an electric field graph for wet condition. In this graph, the electric charge starts dropping slowly zero at 0 0.9 mV per m and after that is increased until 8.5 MV per m on 60 mm length. For this graph, the relationship between length and electric charge that we can conclude is that if the length increases, the electric charge will increase because in wet condition, they can act as charge traps leading to the accumulation of electric charge on the surface. This can result is an event charge distribution increase electric field and potential issue such as partial, partial discharge or flash over also can facilitate the dissipation of electric charge from the surface of the insulator. Next, for the last result, that is a salty conditions. Okay, for the salty conditions, based on figure 7.12 for voltage graph in salty condition shows that when an insulator in an alternate sheet 132 kV is exposed to salty condition, the presence of the of uh, the presence of salt deposit can have a significant impact on its electrical performance. The voltage graph in such condition typically shows an increase in initial voltage and decreasing in insulation resistance over time or over 60 mm length. We can also see that length affected the voltage indirectly proportional uh, in the graph. As salt accumulates on the insulated surface, it creates conductive parts leading to higher leakage current and a reduced ability to insulate electrical voltage. This can result in energy losses surface leakage. Figure 7.13 shows that the relationship between electric field graph for salty condition, where the electric charge starts dropping slowly at 0.9 mV per m and increase slowly and having slight, th slight decreasing until it reach constant increasing until 1.4 mV per m over 50 mm length. We can see that in wet condition, the electric charge increase exponent exponentially than salty condition because in a salty condition, salt deposit on the surface of the insulator create conductive part but their conductive is typically lower compared to water. As a result, the electric field intensity along the surface of the insulator is 
generally lower in a salty condition compared to a wet condition. In conclusion, the objective of the project has been achieved. The use of the polymeric substance such as silicon rubber can result in an acceptable dielectric material for a high voltage insulator. This is because silicon rubber are excellent mechanical strength, resistance to tracking and erosion, strong thermal stability and electrical insulating qualities. And for the second point is final element analysis can be performed by using the FEMM software to examine how the insulator performs under electrical stress. The final element approach is used by FM software to simulate and examine the electromagnetic phenomena. And the final point is it is crucial to concentrate on the material choice and design optimization when developing an insulator that complies with a certain standards while taking environmental consideration into account. With all the objectives has been achieved, it is allowed for the creation of effective insulator that balance performance safety and environmentally sustainability that's all from us thank you so today i would like to demonstrate for the risk assessment process involved in high voltage testing so basically for our uh 132 kb system polymeric insulator alternation prototype have undergone the finite element analysis and now we will have the high voltage testing so the risk assessment process involved uh first we need to identify the types of hazard uh occur when we test in the uh, high voltage battery. The types of hazard may occur such as uh, chemical hazard, if we use uh, sodium chloride, uh, mechanical hazard, and electrical hazard such as trip or fault. And the second, we need the second step. We need to identify uh, who, a person, or what thing might be harmed during the high voltage testing. And the third is we need to evaluate the risk, uh, whether the risk is in uh, a high risk, moderate risk, or low risk. And next, after we identify, evaluate the type of risk that we'll, we need to face during the high voltage testing inside the battery, we need to identify the control measure in order to overcome the risk that we will, we will face. And the next step, we need to evaluate the remaining risk. And we need to record the findings in the risk assessment. So when we record the findings in the risk assessment, we will uh, uh, record in, in the book so that uh, other person who might use the high voltage laboratory for testing their insulator they might know what types of uh, danger that uh, they will face during uh, testing, uh, during conducting experiment for high, uh, for the high voltage insulator prototype. And lastly, we need to review and update uh, the risk assessment that we record uh, necessary so that people uh, will keep in track uh, for doing the high voltage test uh, while conducting experiment inside the uh, high voltage laboratory. And for next, we will go to the conclusion for the high of the high voltage testing. So there are several conclusions that can be made from the high voltage testing. The suspension of polymeric insulator is tested under high voltage alternating current or in short form we call as hashback. Hashback is the test that um, uh, destruct, uh, method of destructible test. So we use this uh, hashback test for our uh, 132 kV polymeric alternation insulator and we test it for dry and wet test in high voltage laboratory occupation. And for a very heavy pollution level or contaminated it is suggested to take a longer creepage distance as compared with the clean area. So, uh, creepage distance is a distance between other alternation to another alternation. So, the, uh, that is called a creepage distance from one alternation to another alternation. And lastly, uh, safety is very important in high voltage engineering.